Um, but we're really delighted because our membership base includes people and organisations from across lots of different walks of life. So the overwhelming majority of our membership is grassroots organisations such as yourselves, which is what we really wanted to pull together. But we've also got um, a few international NGOs as well as, of course, national bodies. And we've got a spread. So we go from the Women's Budget Group through to Unison, through to Ben and Jerry's. Um, so we've got quite a good spread, but it also includes um, uh, organisations such as Hastings Community of Sanctuary, um, and, and it's really nice mix of groups who are really active. So thank you very much for joining us. You can still join, um, and you can check out who else has joined us on our website. We had a pre-launch rally, which is available if anybody missed it, which was really um, a really good hour well spent. We had a social media launch on the 10th of May. Um, you can go to our website anytime just to check out um what we've been doing but in in particular we've been really wanting to put people with lived experience at the very front of our campaigning as well so we've been working closely um with lots of people and our media launches today um and what i'm going to do is i'm i hope this will launch this will sorry this will come into the chat i'm just going to drop a few things i've no idea if that's spoiled your screen view or not um, but I'm going to drop a few things in the chat box um, when we finish. I can't do it now, I see. Um, in terms of media coverage today, so you can hear Beth from Safe Passage at quarter to seven this morning on the Today programme, which we're really pleased to get um, to get that start. We'll have Enver from Refugee Council on ITV Lunchtime News. Um, and we've also got coverage in The Guardian, The Independent. Joanna Lumley's done as a gorgeous film. Um, everybody's favourite um, and so I'll send you some links to that I'll put those in the chat box in a moment so we're really pleased with that coverage because this is really the start of actually building something where we're really working closely together to stand together with refugees so I'll tell you about the next steps of our campaign um, and this is one of my first photographs that I think might be a uh, half inch so thank you very much for that because we, we um, there's just so much going on that we wanted to be able to showcase so our big goals as together with refugees is to really shift that media and public narrative so that we're actually presenting um, the real case about how people feel um, about uh, the UK's uh, asylum system, our immigration plans, our coverage and our news story today, which I didn't say, we've obviously launched the campaign and the size of us, but our coverage really clearly shows that actually people do want us to offer a brighter, positive, better um, the future for people seeking asylum and for refugees in the UK and that we can do that. So you want to shift the media and public narrative. The government would have you believe um, that people don't want to see refugees and people seeking asylum here. And we know that's just not true. So we want to change. It's a longer term goal. We want to shift the media and public narrative. We really want to show a positive alternative vision. We want to build um, our movement, to, I, I'm not going to claim that we are the movement in any way, but we really want to facilitate that, to provide an umbrella by which groups and organisations can come together and be stronger um, together, be more visible, be more powerful together. So we really do want to have a lead role for people with lived experience at the very forefront of that, like I've already said, but to work closely with you in making that happen. We want to develop that political support, so to be really smart about what's going on in Parliament as the new plan for immigration goes through. We know the Borders Bill will come through um, in the next month or so. We really want to see what we can do to knock a few corners off that. We're not thinking or naive enough to think we can change all of that now, but we can certainly make sure that this government regrets what they do and that they don't wish to be seen as the party doing those things and then we want to get closer overall to winning that long-term systemic change so you won't see this written down in a strategy document anywhere but my personal goal is I want to make it politically untenable for any major political party to be going into the next general election without presenting that positive alternative vision so that's where I think we really want to come together to make that happen and I think today's coverage has been a real boost for that and some of the activities that I know have already happened have been a really strong part of that so thank you to you because we would be nothing without you. So these are our key strands of activity. There's no surprises here. The first key strand is around the media communication strategy to say that sharing that narrative. Quite a lot of evidence has re and research has been uh, undergone in terms of what media messaging works and how we do that. There are some people, sadly, we are never going to break uh, change them. And that breaks my heart because I can't really understand on a personal level 
why people don't want to offer that alternative vision but there are some that don't we're not we're not thinking we're going to convert them but there are people who we really believe we can persuade and bring with us we want to really target them and work with you to do that and we've got the together with refugees media pushes we we're not planning a huge one around refugees week what we want to do for that is to actually work with you to uh really amplify what you're doing but we will have a big push after Refugee Week in July for the 70th anniversary of the UN Convention and then again in autumn. And it'd be really good to talk with you about what ideas you've got both for Refugee Week, but also around the UN Convention. We really want to do that local mobilisation. So like I say, showing solidarity, but lobbying key targets and be really smart about who the members of parliament we're targeting. So not necessarily thinking we would go through national lobbying routes for that, but thinking who's working at a local level, what they might do. So an example that I always give because it's where I live and it's my local MP, but my local MP is has been recently put in charge of, of writing Labour Party policy. For example, it's Annalisa Dodds. We've got Asylum Welkin, who are very active here what can we do to bring people with lived experience to meet with Annalisa does for example there will be um much more focus for us in terms of the conservative backbenchers for example what conservative ministers are how do we reach key targets working with organizations locally so have a think about who your mp is and what role they might be able to play in terms of actually changing that political uh Rhetoric, so we will work, and in fact, the political reality. So we'll work with agreed policy priorities, bill amendments, and have that real coordinated approach is what I hope for. I hope you can see that each of those three, three strands reinforces the next strand. And that's the theory of change, that we're changing that media narrative, working locally through grassroots, and actually, ultimately, politically, we hope, achieving a change. So just to give you some key timeline sort of dates, we've obviously may have mentioned the media launch this morning um we've got some pre-bill parliamentary work we're expecting the borders bill to hit parliament at probably by the beginning of june the government have said or we think they're going to wait until the police crime and sentencing bill has finished at committee stage so the first reading of the borders bill likely to be just after refugee week then in late July, like I say, we've got 70th anniversary of the UN Convention. We're looking at, hopefully with you, local mobilisation around that time too. And then in September, October, we've got the usual round of party conferences, the parliamentary work as the bill continues, and then maybe hopefully a national rallying point during autumn, December. A lot of this depends on that bill timeline and also how we go and how we continue building. That's my whistle stop. It wasn't five minutes, sorry. Uh, Sorry, Sean, I, I tried. Um, um, this is a photograph from Asylum Welcome. Um, uh, and this is an orange heart that Asylum Welcome organised with their members to do so. And I've seen wonderful um, ideas and activities already come from other organisations, but we want to bring as many um, cities and communities of sanctuary together with other grassroots organisations to really make our presence felt. So that's my email address. Drop me a line if you want to get on the mailing list and I'll be here for the next hour as well. Um, hopefully not to talk too much more. So thank you very much for your time. And I'm so delighted to be here. And can I just say, Sean, thank you so much for your support from City of Sanctuary in, in everything we're doing with together with refugees, because we'd be nothing without City of Sanctuary and all of you. So thank you. It's just fantastic to be here. It's a wonderful way to come back from a long bank holiday weekend. Thanks, Sally. That was great. Um, I don't know if you've got um, time for food questions. We probably do. I know um, Angie in the chat has asked, I can't find you on Facebook or Twitter. Um, Sally, what's your Twitter handle? Oh, you can find me on 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 the Twitter, as I like to call it. Um, uh, I'm at Sally Copley. But uh, together with refugees, doesn't have our own. We don't have our own social media accounts. I'm afraid. Um, we're working on. Uh, hopefully, um, we. I mean, we'd like to have that, but we haven't got that at the moment. But you can find us through um, using the hashtags. Who we are and together with refugees, but also lots of organisations are tweeting today. IMEX have got some great stuff that they've put up too. Um, and what I will just paste here is just some of the snippets of the coverage. What a lovely long list that is. Um, so yeah, um, I'll also put my Twitter handle here too, so you can find me here. Lovely, thanks, Sally. I should have said at the beginning, um, the breakout rooms will be an opportunity to talk about how we're going to celebrate sanctuary also after Refugee Week, including the 
anniversary of the UN um, convention. So we had our event, the Celebrating Sanctuary event back in April, where we talked about how as a network, we can promote the positive message of Wacom and promote everything that you are doing. So it'll be an opportunity for us to kind of think longer term when we have, when we go to the breakout rooms. Um, but for now, we were going to hear from Claire, who's going to talk about their plans for Refugee Week in Norwich. Hello. Um, so what we've done here is we uh, we have a number of um, quite uh, recognizable buildings that are part of our movement already. So, for example, Norwich Castle is a a 900 year old Norman, Norman castle, which you may uh, be able to picture. And um, so what we came up with was the idea of projecting the, this orange um, love heart image onto the side of the castle for, we were lucky enough to get it for the first three days of um, Refugee Week. And uh, what we've done is we've set up a social media campaign where people uh, just send us a photo and then their photo uh, is uploaded and added to the heart. So the heart will be made up of uh, dozens or hundreds or whatever we manage to get, but uh, of images of the people in Norwich and Norfolk and further afield who support our very simple message really i think we we pared it down to um we want norwich to be a welcoming city for all something along those lines um so uh we've <clears throat> we've found that obviously we sort of hatched, hatched this plan not that long ago and we scrabbled around and we found uh the it was uh the business improvement district who who owned the projector they were actually very pro our approach and um, were very happy to help us which is quite interesting they sort of said the reason one of the reasons they were set up was to promote community activism like this so they they were very keen to help us um, so but what we have found as a small team of volunteers is that um, we have been scrabbling around a little bit to get it all launched and ready in such a short time frame um, but I, I still think it's possible that if if any of your cities have a business improvement district, like a, a, what they call it a bid, I think you could approach them and you could say, could we project an orange heart with the hashtag together with refugees underneath it? Uh, I know Maggie, our re regional representative, lovely Maggie, is um, doing something along those lines for Reading. Um, I don't know if you're doing the faces or not, Maggie, but even if it was just an orange heart, it's quite a, you know, it's a very um, simple but symbolic uh, image to, to have projected in the sky or on, the, on a building. Um, and so we we are so I suppose we're we're looking at it now with what ten days till t until we do it. Um, we I mean we would if we did it again next year I think we would get a, a lot more. I think we're we're just launching the social media campaign now. And uh, so for example, my colleague Zana, who's brilliant with all the technical digital side has been working so hard that she was ill over the weekend. So she's just kind of, you know, she's been doing stuff at 11 o'clock at night, trying to get it all done because she works full time. And, you know, all of us work around our volunteering. So uh, it may not have as many faces as it could do. It maybe doesn't represent quite how much support there is in Norwich, but I think it's a start and I think it gets people talking. Um, and then at the same time, we've also launched a uh, uh poster art campaign which is if any of you know norwich it right in the middle of norwich where the market and the forum is there's a church that has railings outside so we're inviting anyone sort of artists or um children or anyone to to kind of doodle a response to the phrase together with refugees and giving them a few pointers like words like sanctuary or 
um, migration or anything like that, that might just sort of launch them into thinking, oh, I know I'm going to draw a picture of the world inside a heart with some love hearts around it or whatever, you know, not some, not some great piece of piece of work of art, but just something that uh, gets them thinking. And we're, we're taking these templates around to local cafes. So again, that is, uh, that's actually very doable. If any of you were thinking of doing it for refugee week, because we could we could share the the template the orange heart uh, templates with you all um, and what we're doing is we've just literally got some plywood which are going to drill holes in and attach to the railings and then again Zana who's very creative has got a picture of what this will look like but I think she's thinking it would look a bit like billboard art so you sort of pet yeah I think there's a, a type of glue that makes it water resistant so we're going to paint it on um, we're all just going to get together a big group of us paint all of these posters onto the, the plywood attach them to the railings and there'll be some a chance to give some information about city of sanctuary at the same time so <clears throat> that's also you know 10 days to go that's that's quite doable if any of you have any local church that would would let you have their railings or anywhere really anywhere that would let you put a board up um and yeah just encouraging cafes to sort of help you you know people might just have a cup of coffee and do a do a do doodle at the same time so those are the two things we've launched it's all been a bit last minute and i think if we did it next year we'd be much more on it and launch it earlier and people would have a better idea what what we were doing but you know it's it's a start so Thank you so much, Claire. That was fantastic. I think you've given lots of ideas and, and you know, we, we just all appreciate that you know, people are doing this as volunteers and you all just do fantastic work. So thank you so much and thank you for coming and, and sharing your ideas. So we're going to hear from Jay now, who's going to talk about their campaigning work. Okay, thanks, Sean. <clears throat> thanks for inviting me. Can I just give um, apologies from Felicity Lawrence, who many of you will know. She she was going to come and speak, and then she's away this week, so um, having a well-deserved break. And I see that Lindsay Tomlinson is here from Hastings Community of Sanctuary as well. Um, and I, I um, so I've got some stuff about campaigning and a few little bits about Refugee Week as well, if that's okay. And I'll try and keep it to five minutes as well but basically we've got our Hastings community of sanctuary as an umbrella group and then out of that we have a campaign a campaign group and um, so we kind of meet the, the community of sanctuary meets less of, often and has lots of partners and then we we meet as a campaign team quite regularly and we were um, prioritizing the lift the ban campaign and ending indefinite detention. And I've been leading on lift the ban and Felicity on ending indefinite detention. And then of course events really overtook us and we found ourselves being really reactive, um, particularly being a coastal town and a dispersal area for about a hundred, around about a hundred um, people seeking sanctuary. Uh, then we have Folkestone and all that that happened just down the coast from us in Napier Barracks, which was so is and is so appalling, and also the threat of the um, legislation changes. So we've kind of um, refocused in some ways, and some of the things that we've done uh, is that we did hold a meeting um, about Napier Barracks, which was really well attended, and online, obviously, a Zoom meeting. And we brought someone with, who'd actually been accommodated there um, to speak, which was incredibly powerful and moving. And we looking at the accommodation provider as well um, in the Clear Springs. And we had Claire from Care for Calais, who obviously that organization is so involved. Um, so we've done that. Um, and we also um, have had, it's interesting, some of quite a lot of this links in with what Sally was saying about what we need to be doing. So I think since our MP, Sally Ann Hart, who is conservative um, and very pro government, was elected in December 2019, I think we've had four meetings with her. 
um, and lots of correspondence. I haven't um, because I, I'm probably not the best person to attend that meeting, but um, a, a lot of my colleagues in, in the campaign group have met, including Lindsay, if anyone wants to talk to her about that later. And, um, and you know, we promised lots of things, but when it comes to actually putting your hand up and voting in Parliament, she goes with the government. So it's not that we're giving up on that. We've, we've probably exhausted that um, channel, uh, although I don't want to be negative because we'll keep definitely keep the communication going, but it's not been that productive. Um, but, um, you know, we so we've met her on all those issues, the lift the ban, the Napier barracks and the ending indefinite detention. And she does, you know, she's got some concerns, but it's just trying to translate that into votes, really. Um, and the last thing I'll just mention in terms of our campaign is that we, um, Felicity really initiated this amazing, um, which was to call a meeting to all collectively fill in the so-called consultation we will uh, for the change in, in uh, and which was, if anybody did tackle it, it was just horrendous. And obviously a completely, you know, a complete sham of a consultation because the Queen's speech was five days later after the closing date. But what Felicity did, we had a small group of us who trialled it. And then uh, think about 20, 30 people came and they all filled in the consultation according to picking out the most relevant questions, not the 45 or whatever it was. So that's been that's just a flavour of what we do um, in the campaign team. I just want to say that the media that, that Sally's mentioned is um, a massive issue for this and this for us. And we've had we've got some really good links with the local online media. We've got about three different um, online media outlets in Hastings and then we've got our traditional paper the Hastings Observer it's not so good with them but we're plugging away at the Hastings Observer and we are going to do we're all going away and um, writing articles to coincide with Refugee Week and they'll be from a different perspective ones you know um, frontline workers with um, people seeking sanctuary and um, uh, one of ours is going to put the economic benefits of welcoming people and all sorts of different aspects. And the mental health issue we're going to cover as well in terms of isolation, not only during COVID, but um, in the way that people are housed and how have very little money to live on and all those and the effect on it on mental health. So we've got a young woman who does an amazing uh, Instagram campaign for us. If you want to take a look at that on the Hastings Community of Sanctuary website. And um, she's really creative and um, she's going to be doing stuff on uh, mental health as well. Um, and then we've got a Twitter account. Again, this has nothing to do with me. Um, it's a much younger um, enthusiastic people than I am. Um, and uh, we were told the other day we've got nearly 500 followers on our Twitter account. So that's really positive. And I'm, I'm sure stuff will be going out today in line with the launch. Um, and we're going, oh, I must mention our, let's keep an eye on the time, our Festival by the Lake which one of our members organises, which is an absolutely wonderful event outside Hastings in a place called Ashburnham. Uh, we couldn't run it last year. We had it online and it's been postponed this year till September. But it does attract hundreds of people and is very much along that the theme that we're talking about is about welcoming people and respecting and giving people dignity and hearing their stories and it's a very entertaining event with music and dance and and food and stuff like that um so uh we're going to the um the point that um claire made from norwich we've also got someone who's very creative in our group and she had done postcards. We'd done conversations from Calais and put postcards. And we too, we've got railings on the uh, right along the seafront, you know, really about three miles or more, longer, actually, might be five miles of railings. So we've done stuff there and um, she's going to be um, uh, recording some small pieces that came out of those postcards, um, that postcard event. 
and we're going to be doing some Vox Pops with Hastings people who have um, volunteered in refugee camps. And just, I'll just quickly bear with me, I'm just checking my notes. Um, oh yeah, apparently, I didn't know this, Felicity told us, you know, the Lampedusa cross that was made from the tragic accident in, of the boat sinking in um, 2013, that's coming to our museum in Hastings. And um, so we will do work with them on some, I think that's in the autumn. And I want to say just very quickly that in the community of sanctuary meeting I went to recently, it was so interesting to hear about museums and libraries become, and schools and educational places becoming community of sanctuaries as well. So we, we're going to be having those conversations. And there's also that very, um, the, the film of that tragic incident called Fire at the Sea. Um, so, and and we also have a, which was an amazing initiative, we have something called Isolation Station Hastings, which is a radio um, channel, and it's um, it was set up um, when the lockdown, the first lockdown happened, and it's a really fantastic community-based radio station, so we will be doing some um, work with them in terms of Refugee Week. And, Sean, if you could just bear with me for half a minute, because it's hot off the press, and I'm very enthusiastic about this. Last night we had a launch of um, um, the, uh, let me just check what we call it, well, the anti-raid. So, of course, in the news very much in the southeast is the number of boat crossings, particularly this weekend with the fine weather and the calm seas which has always got a tinge of negativity around it. And so we, we are also looking at um, our residents here who are seeking sanctuary. And we're going to, we've set up an anti-raids network. And we're going to, because this is happening, we know from Glasgow, and it was a really inspiring meeting because we had a, a speaker from Glasgow, someone from Haringey and someone from Sheffield. And um, and we really, you know, we know it's happening in Hastings. So we're looking at networking, having WhatsApp and doing a leaflet to protect. And we're not going, and the last thing I'll say is the language is very important from Glasgow and all the speakers, which is, it's about our neighbours and our community, not about asylum seekers or people, you know, it is actually, these are people who live in our community and we have to protect them from the kind of, um, you know, the uh, hostile environment, home office and um, dawn raids that are going on. So that's something we started as well. I'm sorry I went over time, do apologise. Thank you very much. No problem, Jay. Thank, thank you so much. You are doing so much. So <laughs> no wonder you went over the times. So thank you so much for sharing. That is just so inspiring, everything that's happening in Hastings. So we're going to go into breakout rooms now, um, and there'll be an opportunity to for you all to share your plans. Um, Joanna, could we do it for 20 minutes and then we'll come back and maybe just share one or two highlights and we'll hopefully finish early on this really nice sunny, sunny morning. So um, Joanna, um, ready? You will be put automatically. Hi everyone, welcome back. So we thought we'd just very quickly maybe highlight just three three of the main points from the breakout rooms. Um, so Flinch have got loads happening, so I won't be able to go into too much detail, but they've got their podcast, which is exciting with stories um, of people with lived experience. And um, one for you, Colleen, is celebrating the Theatre Cloyd Awards. So I know we were looking at lists of what awards are happening in Refugee Week. So that's one. Uh, and then uh, Rainbow Home doing a walk in the park. We had a really interesting discussion about linking with um, Pride Month. And that's something together with refugees is going to explore. And um, we also had the really important point from Alice, which um, uh, cannot overlook and need to say that every event but the importance of anything that we do being co-produced with people with lived experience and um, so those were the, the key points from us and um, Colleen do you want to do your group or have you pointed some? Uh, yes I didn't take notes thinking about three particular points I think um, uh, I guess there were 
two key themes emerged. One was about um, the power of talking to your MP and in introducing your MP to somebody seeking sanctuary or somebody with lived experience and actually breaking down all those um, negative myths around uh, criminality, etc. Um, and, and the importance of that. And I think the other main theme was was the arts theme and that the we, we cannot walk alone. So we heard about a fantastic project, which I will be tweeting about, Arte de Lagrimas, The Art of Tears, and it's refugee art from the Texican, Texas-Mexican border, you know, which is uh, exhibited um, along with the shoes that people discarded when they were given new shoes on, on arrival um, and, and the power of that. Fantastic work going on in Nottingham and in Penrith. Um, I think that's all I've got at the moment. I really like the idea of linking in with Pride Month, which of course also starts today. Um, but yes, in general, it was... Uh, a good discussion. Thank you to my group. I don't know if anybody wants to add anything to it. Okay, so we hand over to the next group then? Is it Maggie? Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, we just, one of the things we mentioned was how important it was to have a, a kind of a joint campaign that we can all get behind so that, uh, you know, when we're speaking with one voice, it is much louder. Um, we talked about some ideas um, um, and what people are doing or would like to do. Um, and there was film showings was one of them. Uh, another idea was um, to have um, an action for each day uh, of refugee week so uh, seven days seven actions and it could be really small things like sharing um, uh, media uh, on social media or, or joining uh, an organized event or donating to a, um, um, a sanctuary seeking charity we also had a really nice idea and I, I, I will share that with you is trying to get the council to fly the refugee flag uh, so with the heart so that was uh, um, it would take some doing but I thought it was really interesting as an idea um, and maybe something we can mention to the local authority network um, and we we also um, talked about how in the past um, uh, food events and that kind of thing was a really lovely thing to be able to get uh, host communities and people of sanctuary seeking background together and of course it's more difficult now but um, yeah where possible uh, in the future that would be a, a great thing to continue doing and um, and also we talked about the power of social media and how as individuals we can all be doing something um, um, to to mark refugee week and to start kind of uh, mobilizing people behind together with refugee so that's it for now thanks Maggie and is it going Hi, um, my group, feel free to intervene as I'm speaking and add points. Um, we spoke a little bit about different festivals, groups and events that each person in the group was engaging with around this time. So Portsmouth City of Science University of Portsmouth engaging with Journeys Festival International, which is, I think, well known to most people on the call. And... Um, Ashley mentioned the Create Without Borders and their Imagining Sanctuary and Sanctuary story, sort of Storytelling events that are coming up. We also had Our World too in our group and they have various advocacy pieces, activities coming up around retelling and telling the refugee journey. Um, again, countering the accounts that are going around in the media. And uh, Claire from Norwich uh, had an additional thing, as well as all the ideas she mentioned in the plenary earlier, talking about their plans, which I think sort of, that's the one that caught her imagination in the group, is the sanctuary trail around Norwich that they are planning. So that's all the organisations around Norwich that have been awarded sanctuary awards and foregrounding them. So that's museum schools, theatres, art centres, library, which are sort of key buildings around the city. And ideally this may be like a guided walk to take people around to see, to show physically, but this year obviously restrictions and the changing restrictions mean that what will probably happen is actually creating a downloadable map of Norwich that shows all the sanctuary awarded organisations around 
it, that people can download and take the walk themselves and actually physically see um, the, I suppose, the map and the network of supportive organisations spread across Norwich. And then we took a complete tangential and fun direction, remembering the millennium beacons that were lit up in 1999 to welcome the new millennium and how that had created sort of that movement of one beacon after the other being lit and showing a trail and whether something along those lines can be visually created for showing supportive places, supportive, welcoming and sanctuary organisations. Um, I don't know if anyone from my group wants to add anything. We had a fun conversation, I think it was sort of Definitely my imagination was lit up as a result. I love the idea of maps. <laughs> I definitely love the idea of the flags with our local authorities. I wonder if that's something we could work towards for the um, 70th anniversary. As I, I, I know it'll be too, knowing how many hoops we need to jump through for local authorities, I don't think it'll be something we could do for Refugee Week, but certainly that's something, Maggie, looking at you, we can start to <laughs> maybe push for uh, something to do in the in the anniversary week in July so great oh what a great morning to come back after a bank holiday um <laughs> it was really great Emma do you have your hands up can I, just add, can I add one one thing that I forgot to mention that we're doing um on the Penrith sort of day of action during refugee week which is to highlight the ration challenge um, which some of your members may also be doing, but coinciding with Refugee Week, Concern International are inviting people to take up this ration challenge where people um, eat the, uh, the same ingredients as a Syrian refugee in Jordan is given for a week. And what we thought we would do is put on our information store just that very small package of food that some of our um, members of our network are going to be eating for that week just to sort of show um, that this is this is the kind of circumstances from which people are, are, are coming um, and it's also of course a fundraiser um, for uh, for Concern International and they're providing that those funds that they raise to to refugees so I just thought I'd mention that the ration challenge I'll pop the link in the chat thanks Emma Anyone else got anything they'd like to share? I can't see any hands up. Sally, did you say you had something you wanted to mention before you finished? Um, um, I did. You did. You can't remember what it is. No, what was it? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I'm so sorry. No. That's how it got dropped off before, isn't it? Can you remember what it was? If anybody in our group can, uh, Claire, did you know? Claire maybe had something else. I just had a question. I, I you... think, Sally, you can expand on your on your media thing, which we discussed, which is very important about the uh, how how the media also during during the uh, the refugee week they also add on to when we say. They ask you to get interviewed, and then at the end of the time, they will find some somebody who doesn't agree with the refugee. And yeah, work out of that. Yeah, yeah, there was that, but I think we were we were also um, there was something. So I can I can say something about that. Yeah, and I think Claire just had a question too, but I think there was something else as well. Maybe Claire, uh, go, Claire go, and then maybe Sally, you can think. Yeah. Of what it was. <laughs> I just had a question with them because we. Here in Norfolk, we do a um, day of welcome in schools on the day before Refugee Week, the Friday before, um, which I know uh, Jake, who came up with that idea, has, has talked um, for the Schools of Sanctuary Network, hasn't he? Uh, but my question for you, Sally, was whether, do you have any resources with all your media coverage? Have you got anything suitable for schools at all that's been developed? Um, I don't know that we do. Um, but let me have a look at it because I know that um, Sean City Sanctuary might well do given the themed work you've done before with schools. No we haven't actually but that's a really good point Claire thinking about what we can pull together for mm. Even um, if it was just something visual that they start to see this orange heart and start to associate that with um, 
with it um we do we we have got a campaign guide that's in the folder that is so in the, in the update that i've sent around this morning and like i say i've i've taken a note of email addresses to make sure i include in future um distributions for that but yeah we th there is a campaign guide that's got all the artwork and we are oh, genuinely okay. not in the least bit precious about people using the heart we want people to use the heart and to take that and there's lots of stuff around messaging um and that kind of thing but maybe sean we can be having a thing having a think about what kind of resource stuff we want to put around um and i think the point about um there are two things about the media the one is um following uh, you know we have talked with the organizers of the uh refugee week or you know uh coordinators for the week and we have said that um together with refugees can be the next step what you might do after um, which is quite an important thing for us to be able to say, keep on gathering around what we're doing. Um, and then Alice, yeah, that point we had about media was about, we, we obviously don't control how the media decides to treat our stories and our news items, but um, and Alice and I were both uh, agreeing with each other about actually what happens when they go to somebody on the street with the quite lazy vox pop. So they'll speak to the expert, they'll speak to somebody, tell their story, they'll give you an infographic with some numbers and then go to, and here's what so-and-so said on the, who I found outside the shopping centre or whoever it is. And we were saying what we can do is just keep on telling people's stories and make it really clear that we are the majority. It is the majority of the country that want to be welcoming and offer people um, sanctuary from war and persecution. So that is a thing we can just keep on saying, and that's why it's a longer term um, mission. But it was Alice, your point that you quite rightly raised. Um, yeah. So let me just really quickly, I forgot to mention uh, what Asylum Matters from Oxford, uh, sorry, not Asylum Matters, Asylum Welcome from Oxford are doing. They are distributing love, the love hearts to, to to people to put on cars. And I thought that's just a really idea. And I think Harry may be able to put the, um, the, the kind of mock of the sticker that they have done if anyone wants to copy that. Uh, Harry, will you do that? It's a really lovely idea. I thought, sorry, I, I didn't want to not give it some uh, attention. So let's see if I could pop it in. Okay, so we'll finish for today. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. So we'll, as ever, aim to get the notes and the um, recording up on, on the website. Um, and Harry's just popped in the, the Twitter link for the Heart for Asylum work. Um, and I saw that on Twitter, I thought it was a lovely idea as well. So I think that leaves us with a nice inspiring idea going forward. Thanks everyone. Thank you so much. Have a good week. Take care, bye-bye. Bye. Thank you, bye. Bye everyone.